morning. It's 75 degrees at eight o'clock this morning, which you would think, oh, it's cloudy. It feels great. Problem is it's humid enough that it makes you spring a leak or make you think that you've sprung a leak at least by about eight in the morning. You're soaked and you're wet and sweaty and it sucks. But since it's 75, I should only have to use about I don't know, a quarter to half a can of ether to get this truck to start. And you think I'm joking, but watch this. Cranking, 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 cranking. Nothing. Little FU in a can. Okay. Shoot a little in there and take here. Gotten pretty good aim at that. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. She hadn't got it yet. She's about to. Oh, 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 oh. Listen to it crank. Come on, come on. There it goes. So what we're doing today, uh, corn prices took a dive off a cliff. So I quit hauling corn for a while. Plus I was busy spraying and then uh, well, they've come back recently. Not quite back to where they were, but they're back up there in that $7 range. And I've still got about eight to 10,000 bushel left that I would tell you that I've just been really good at marketing and saved it to get $7, but honestly, I just haven't had time to haul it and it's worked out in my favor. Nonetheless, need to get that hauled. Need to get some grain bins cleared out before harvest. So, I'm gonna get this thing backed into the shed. Uh, that Tempty trailer's had a brake that keeps grabbing. The, uh, one of the brake chambers on it, or whatever you call them, is leaking air inside of it. So, uh, it needs some attention. I'm just gonna pull that off, back it into the shop, pull it off, and replace that. So, we're gonna go through, grease the trailer, grease the truck, go through, service them, get them ready basically have it ready for fall probably gonna go ahead and do an oil change and everything while I'm out here I'm looking at these beans I'm gonna flip you guys around and show you so earlier this year when I was planting these beans it was last week of March first week of April I think everybody said it's too cold it's too wet you're a dumbass blah 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 well my dumbassery once again is paying off because Pods, 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 four bean pods, nonetheless. Pods, pods, pods. Oh, and we're still blooming and setting more pods. So those should, especially with the rain we've been getting, and we're supposed to get more of all week long, um, these should be 80, 90, 100 bushel beans. Uh, I get a little wild when it comes to planting soybeans, I'm not gonna lie. The colder and the wetter it is, I don't care anymore. Um, I plant as long as it is dry enough to not get hung up and warm enough that there's not frost in the ground, I will plant soybeans. Been doing that three years in a row, progressively more every year. And the genetics and the seed treatment in these things are doing awesome. I haven't had an issue yet. Um, they are looking really, really good. So I don't know. I haven't had a reason to stop doing that, um, but these are branching out. Uh, let's just pull one here. What the heck? Find this one. Come on, come out. So lots and lots of pods. And that's, that's just on one plant. And like I said, we're still putting on more. This one's branching out. Um, so I was counting some the other day. A lot of them had about 50 to 60 pods on them and then roughly 30 more blooms, um, which are potential pods. So at that rate and at the population they are, which I'm not going to judge bean yield, but they're going to be good beans, I think. So, uh, I don't know, early planting, and I'm not trying to brag or boast, but most people call me crazy around here for getting in the field as early as I do with soybeans, but 
I have not had a reason to stop doing it yet. Let's put it that way. So now that this thing's aired up, we're going to go beat the brakes with a hammer and see if we can't get them to release because that thing's just been a real pain in the ass lately. So may even get some corn hauled up today. I don't know. So it's a sad day for the old farmhouse today. We are, uh, well, we're giving it an open floor plan. It's seen its better days. You guys have been asking what I was going to do with it since it got struck by lightning. Well, here's your answer. Also, meet my new skid steer. It's a Bobcat T76 Platinum. Uh, I didn't need the Platinum, but the way it worked out, got in for the same price as a base model and with tracks so just kind of the way it worked out uh, got a really good deal on it it is brand new it's got like three hours on it right now so we're breaking it in uh, we are breaking it in for sure yeah we're gonna put a nice picture window here glass wall modern look you know get rid of the whole old wrinkly farmhouse look I hate to mash all this stuff up but I don't know what else we're going to do with it, so it's going bye-bye. It's going bye-bye for sure. So my plan is to burn this house, or what's left of it, but what I'm doing is I'm making three different piles. The house pile, the roof pile, the metal pile, roof pile, shingles, basically everything that's pretty illegal to burn. Uh, so I've just peeled the roof off. I've got to get that one last piece there, but other than that, I have peeled the entire roof off. And I'm just gonna have them bring a dumpster in and I'm gonna load all that up. Um, and then I'm making a burn pile away from everything. I would have just burned it all right here, but one, it was really hard to separate it without kind of pulling it apart. And two, I think the fire would have got so hot, I would have, you know, potentially scorched the metal on a bunch of buildings around here, which I definitely don't wanna do. So, surgically removed this roof and this skid steer with this grapple is freaking amazing. Uh, you can get very precise with it. Really, really like this Bobcat so far. Hell of a lot better than the new Holland, which I was not upset to see leave. Long story short with that thing, it left on a low, or it left on a uh, rollback wrecker because it crapped out again and I just finally had enough with it. So I went and bought a new one. It looks a lot more open around here, except for that and that. We'll get it all cleaned up. But these I'm keeping because, damn it, they're just cool. Uh, old notched out lumber, and they'd stick the two befores into those, and that's what was holding the house together. So it weathered a whole hell of a lot of storms. We get some very, very high winds through here, and that house always stood through all of them. Now it was sagging and there's been a lot of termite damage. This is one of the better ones, but a lot of them, it didn't take very much to snap them in half with the backhoe, but this house did not put up a, well, I don't want to say it didn't put up a fight. It put up a uh, pretty good fight to get it knocked down with that backhoe. Uh, it was a pretty stout house, to be honest, which that backhoe is not the strongest, but a lot of those old wooden beams and this true dimensional lumber, I hate to just burn, but a lot of it is so rotten um, and sagging and not straight and just not worth salvaging. So this house got hit by lightning for those that don't know. Um, it absolutely fried it. It's the house I was living in when my wife and I got married. We now live right up the road, but it's still a... I can walk to the farm from where I live very, very easily. So, in fact, I do that sometimes, but not very often. But, uh, yeah, it uh, got fried by lightning. Was not really worth salvaging. It had a lot of uh, structural issues with it to start with. And then after the lightning hit it, it just was not feasible to... Um, try and rewire the entire house it had plaster walls you would have had to knock out and rewire it just wouldn't have been worth the trouble wouldn't have been worth the money so we cut our losses had another house 
and we went there so i've got a few more shingles i gotta fish out of here and then this will be ready to be set ablaze um, a little bittersweet to tear it down it is the first house that i ever lived in well i i wouldn't say the first house i ever lived in first house i ever lived in was right there and then i moved to here and now i live up there so i haven't moved very far in my lifetime I gotta say, that house is old and as settled and as sagging and rotten as it was. It put up a hell of a fight to turn um, into a scrap pile, basically. Tearing it down was... It fought me. Uh, lots of 6 by 6s and 4 by 4s in there. We're on new construction. You might have a 4 by 4 but more than likely a two before, and that was all rough cut dimensional lumber and it was native timber. It wasn't cheap pine. It was actually an inch and three quarters by three and three quarters. It was dimensional, a two before was two by four inches. Um, very, very solid house. The whole thing was held up by logs. I actually had every exterior wall knocked out of it. The only thing left was a few interior walls where the uh, closets were in the center of the house. And that entire roof was sitting on that. And it wasn't until I knocked out those closet walls that the entire roof on the entire house actually fell down, which was just extremely impressive to me. Um, but that older construction, they don't build things like they used to, let's put it that way. Um, very, very impressed. Kind of sad to tear it down. A little bittersweet to tear it down. Uh, it was the first place I lived after I got weaned off of living with my mom and dad. And uh, put a little work into it, cleaned it up, and uh, moved in there. So, not long after I got married, my wife and I were in there. And we lived there about a year got hit by lightning and it already had all kinds of issues and when the lightning hit it that was kind of the final straw but at the same time the older gentleman that used to help me right he helped me get into farming he's the reason I farm today um, he had passed away and I had just bought a farm which had another house on the house he lived in um, so I moved into that house and uh, we're actually getting ready to do a remodel on that and do a little bit of an addition. It's only about 800 square foot right now, so it's a two bedroom, one bath. Uh, very, very, very small, and we are quickly outgrowing it uh, with one kid and you know more in the future. So uh, two bedrooms just is not not quite going to be enough for that. Yeah. 800 square foot, so. Um, we are doing a little bit of an addition, uh, doing some of it ourselves, having a contractor do some of it, but it's nothing extravagant whatsoever. We're basically adding a bedroom and a bathroom and a little living area, but uh, other than that, it's not extravagant whatsoever, but it's a little more than what we have. So anyways, yeah, that, that old house Let's just say that the new addition will not be near as sturdy as the old house we lived in. Uh, which it was sagging and settling and it, it had areas of it that did fall down way too easily. I mean, I'd just tap them with the bucket and the wall would fall down because they were so rotten from termites and stuff. But it, the actual bones in the inside of the house, it wasn't going anywhere. It was pretty impressive. We're loading hay with a new bobcat today. My wife is driving and it is terrifying because she does not know what drive slow through a hayfield means. They're not strapped and she's sitting there bouncing them and bouncing them and bouncing them. It's a little sketchy, like how she just drove under the tree limbs instead of hanging to the left. She doesn't know any better. I'm trying to keep my cool, but 
Use your head, woman. Use your head. Well, we made it with the first set. First 12 are here. That's good. Not bad looking bales. They're sagging a little bit, but they've been sitting in the field quite a while, but still not terrible. I don't know. I don't like letting them sit outside, but I don't have anywhere to put them inside. So it is what it is. It's just kind of, they're going to be what they're going to be. They're not net wrapped. They're not pretty, but cows will eat them just the same. So, or at least mine will. And they're going to be hungry. And no, I don't have cows yet, but they're going to be back there this winter. Load two. Stacking up ugly bales. But feeds feed. Starting to kind of get my junk line cleaned up around here too. Going to move that dirt pile. Got a place for all that concrete to go and a scrap man's getting a bunch of that stuff except for those chem farm tanks. If anybody's interested in some double rolling baskets or a five bar harrow, let me know. Morning. I'm going to do some things today that I'm not looking forward to. Like unhooking the boat. I'd rather just leave it hooked on and go to the lake today. But we've got corn to sell and a bin to clean out, so got up extra early today. Not as early as I would have liked, but I didn't set an alarm, so I woke up when I woke up. But woke up, hopefully beating a little bit of hot weather today. And we are going to start getting the bin cleaned out. But first I gotta get a tractor on the auger. So I gotta move the sprayer and hook up to a trailer and haul it over there and all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm gonna start doing that. Well, good afternoon. It's been a while since I've recorded anything. I built a wall in the shop and uh, it's on a sliding door. So I can still open this and have the whole shop opened up again. It's not hot enough to do that today though. Got some benches some shelves, whatever you want to call it. They're made. But the main thing today was I was going to work on getting the last of the corn hauled off. But uh, it's been going well. Uh, had brake issues this morning. Thing kept locking up. Figured out it was leaking air inside of that brake chamber. So I just beat on that. And... Uh, didn't quite have to get a torch out, but I was about this close. Uh, you run these hopper bottoms in the wintertime and inevitably around here in southern Indiana and north of here, uh, you have salt and salt does wonderful things to steel frame hopper bottom trailers underneath. Um, it's a good time. So brakes and brake parts Anytime you got to work on them, you've got a good quarter to half inch worth of rust on all of your threads that you get to play with. So it's always a good time. I try and keep them as clean as I can in the winter time, but it just doesn't always work out that way. Uh, when you're running them every day down the interstate, hauling corn, hauling soybeans down to the river, uh, they just, they corrode. So finally got that off. So we're gonna run in town to break and wheel. Go grab one of those, replace it, and hopefully still get the truck loaded today. But it's already 1.30, so we'll see. Also, one thing you never want to do with these is take that clamp off because these are spring-loaded and they're like a bomb going off when you uh, cut them apart. So I do not recommend doing that. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're a little sketchy, but... We're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna take her to town. Oh, and the house is gone and the basement's filled in and that's all smoothed up. I got a little bit of trash that I need to put the bucket on the skid steer and uh, clean back up. And then that pile there is shingles and siding and shit that wouldn't burn or shouldn't burn, wouldn't burn, same thing. Um, so. 
I've got a uh, rollback dumpster supposed to be here sometime. I, I don't know. They said they were really busy, but they'd get to me when they could. So hopefully they get here sometime halfway soon. That would be nice. Um, and then I'll be able to put the grapple on the skid steer, get that loaded up, and uh, that'll be it for the house. But it's... Like I said, I still got some trash to pick up out there, but the basement's filled in, leveled off. I'm sure it's gonna settle and I'm gonna have to put more dirt there. So I have not um, planted any grass on it and I'm not going to. Honestly, it's the wrong time of the year to do it anyways. But second of all, I know we need a few rains and I know that's gonna settle because I shoved a lot of concrete and stuff into it from the foundation. So I know it's not totally, totally filled in. It is going to settle. So no big deal. I'm just going to let it do that before I go planting grass and then have to dump dirt on top of grass because grass seeds like over a hundred bucks a bag now. And I just don't really want to buy any more than I have to. But while we're back here, I'm going to pick this thing up and take it back. Um, trailer brakes locked up right here. So I got in the semi, put it in low gear and just bumped it with the skid steer to get it moving and then jumped out of the skid steer. All right, well, we got the right parts. Got this all put on, nice and new. Looking good, looking a lot better than the other side. So we're ready to load corn now. Except, except it's absolutely pouring. So I guess we're not gonna load corn this afternoon. I got that done, literally, I, I tightened the last airline as it started raining, so. That's cool. So now that that job's done, I guess I've got a reason to take the grease gun and give the trailer a good greasing. Because, uh, yeah, I don't want to load corn with a little six inch auger in this. I think it would test about 35% if I did that. So not going to do that. I may get started on this project here. Got some discombobulation to discombobulate new lights because that one's super foggy and that one's super broken uh, I got a piece to fix this uh, it may or may not have man it is pouring right now it may or may not have gotten uh, into a tree accidentally parking brake doesn't work and shit happened but uh yeah, she's, she's coming down good out there. And the, the semi door's wide open and the window's down. I'm gonna go close that. Be right back. All right, that was a lot of rain in a short amount of time. It's all huddled on both sides of the driveway. I mean, it rained for like five minutes, but it poured. Typical. Typical, typical, typical. So I got the windows closed, but the headliner in this semi leaks just a little bit. Well, it leaks right by this fan, and I don't know if you guys remember when you were a kid, but your mom might have had one of those little foam fans that had a little squirt bottle on it. it missed you when you were like an infant or a toddler or whatever. Well, since this leaks, it mists right into the fan and hits you in the face, and I gotta say, it actually feels pretty good because it's super humid right now, so. The air conditioner in this truck doesn't work, but that does. So, get enough for who it's for. I need the defrost to work as well. It's that humid right now. Morning. Uh, last night, got the semi loaded, so we're gonna take that and go get it unloaded this morning. With some corn. Uh, it's up 25 cents today, so I'm kinda glad I waited. And that yesterday worked out the way it did because I was planning on hauling that load off yesterday. Brakes wouldn't work on the semi and it started pouring down rain. So it got pushed back today. It's another few hundred bucks for the price difference. So we'll take it. Uh, sometimes things like that work out for a reason, I guess. Uh, but last night I got over there and it took about two and a half hours to get the semi full. Wasn't really recording because if I would have, it would have sounded like a uh, 
ship full of sailors and it was just me so uh screwed around to the pipe wrench for 40 minutes trying to get the unload to turn rats um again so got that fixed then the bin sweep was acting up i uh, got that temporarily fixed um six inch unload lots of scooping it's a 24 foot sweep and a 28 foot bin so you get to do a lot of scooping around the outside edges but it is what it is we got the truck loaded so let's go sell some 670 something corn i like it all right no time like the present so let's get with it Thank <laughs> you. 